welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the middle of the week. I appreciate so much that you're making Bible tract echoes a part of your day. If you can right now, reach over, pick up your Bible and join me in the book of Titus, Titus and chapter two. I'm going to begin to read at verse 11 here momentarily. I also have in my hand, I've got a gospel tract because if you listen regularly, you know that Bible tract echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible. Bible Tracks Incorporated. I want to talk to you about this particular tract in my hand today, but then I will be encouraging you to get from us a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. So, besides getting your Bible open, why don't you get something on which you can jot some notes, have a pen or pencil ready. Along the way, you'll be able to jot down our contact information so that you can tell us where you live and how we can give that sample packet of tracts to you. But I want to lead into our Bible study this way with a question. Here it is. Is your local church healthy? Is your local church healthy? Now, I'm not asking if your church is exciting or active. Is it large or small? I'm not asking that. I'm asking if it is healthy. Now, for us to answer the question, there's two things we need to know. Number one is we're going to have to know a lot about our church, obviously, which means we're going to have to be at our church's services whenever they're taking place, and we're going to need to be involved in the life of our church. But the other thing we're going to have to know is something of a biblical definition of what a healthy church looks like. Now, As you know from yesterday's broadcast, I recently got back from preaching and teaching the Bible in the country of Cuba, and the churches in Cuba tend to be very healthy, and here's why. They have three basic things. Number one, they have strong, godly leaders. Number two, the churches are deliberately discipling young believers and they're developing new leaders. And thirdly, they are very proactive in evangelism. And by that, I mean that the individual believers are proactively telling the gospel to lost people as a way of life. I'm bringing all of this up because we are here in the book of Titus to the very heart of the book. This week, we're looking at chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. My title for the entire study of Titus is this, Growing Healthy Churches in Unholy Soil. These four verses are at the heart of a healthy local church. So get your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes, and let's study the Word of God together. But along the way, not only should we evaluate our churches, we need to evaluate our own lives. Amen? Well, get your Bible, and in a moment, I'll begin to read at verse 11. I have that tract in my hand. Now, when I refer to a tract, I'm referring to a gospel tract. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. I'm talking about a short written presentation of God's Word. The tracts that we offer here are very beautiful tracts. They're eye-catching, but the title is meant to draw you in. The one in my hand right now is entitled, Are You Afraid? And on the front cover, you're going to see a child looking into a dark room. Friend, you and I both know that being a child in this day and age can be somewhat of a tenuous thing. There's a lot of issues children need to deal with. Fear and fear of a lot of different things can be part of many children's lives. This tract, Are You Afraid?, is designed for children to confront them with the fact that there is a saving God who loves them and wants to be their helper. 
we build this gospel tract on the verse of Isaiah 40, verse 10, which says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. And the verse goes on from there. We explain this verse to kids that are in older elementary age for them to know they have a God that loves them and they need not fear because if they know Christ, they have a God who's with them and helps them. Friend, here's a great gospel tract. Are you afraid? It's geared for older age elementary kids. It's just one of the over 40 tracks in that sample packet. You'll be ready when my announcer gives our contact information, or you can just go to our website, which is Bible Tracks. Inc.org. If your Bible's open to Titus chapter 2, beginning at verse 11, here is what the Bible says. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. We'll stop right there. Verse 11 begins with our English word for, F-O-R, and it's a signal word. It signals us that we are about to receive an explanation. I've been using five words, or I will use five words, all beginning with the letter R, like in the word robot, uh, to form my outline for these four verses. My R word uh, to begin with was the word reason, dealing with this explanation, We are now going to be given a reason, an explanation behind the charge that we saw in chapter one to find godly pastors and elders. It's the reason behind why we get the charge in chapter two, verses one to 10, to develop healthy lay workers in our churches. And what's the reason? Well, the reason is this, God's grace has appeared and God's grace is for all men. So we need to have healthy pastors and healthy lay people who can go and tell their community about God's grace that brings salvation. My second R word was the word revelation. God's grace has, verse 11 says, has, past tense, appeared. It has been revealed. This verse is referring to the entrance into our world by God himself in physical form, the form of a man, and obviously that is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. But now, word number three is the word rigor, R-I-G-O-R, the word rigor or the work of God's grace in this is based upon verse 12. In verse 11, God's grace brings salvation, and this grace is available, and it's for all men. That's what verse 11 says. Now, though, in verse 12, the work of grace shifts. In verse 11, God's grace works in the unsaved. Here in verse 12, God's grace is rigorous. It's at work in the lives of believers. Well, how does grace work in us? Well, verse 12 says it teaches us. You see, friend, at salvation, our physical bodies become the temple of God because God the Holy Spirit came into us to permanently dwell in us. And one of the things, one of the ministries of God the Holy Spirit is to teach us as believers. He teaches us spiritual truth from the Word of God. Grace, friend, is an attribute of God. If it's an attribute of God and the Holy Spirit is God, and he is, then God the Holy Spirit is rigorously at work through grace in teaching us many things. The grace of God teaches us, verse 12 says, to say no to some things and yes to others. Grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness. We deny, or we could put the word disown there. We disown the characteristics or the qualities that are contrary to what God would be like. Anything that's not like God is ungodly. That means we have to let the Spirit of God examine all the nooks and crannies of our life to see if we look like Jesus or not. But we also, verse 12 says, disown or deny worldly lusts. Worldly lust. Now, the word lust simply means a passion, a drive. 
We've all known people who are passionate about things like sports or cars or, heaven forbid, doing exercise. Well, the idea here of lust or passions refers to something even deeper in our lives, deep in our spiritual life. All of us were born with an internal spiritual drives. They are lust, and the Bible lists them this way, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You and I, as unsaved people, crave to act upon these desires, these passions. We do so because we have convinced ourselves, our mind has convinced us that these cravings will fulfill us. They're going to make us happy. They'll make us satisfied. And so by acting on these cravings, we will feel important. We're going to feel loved, or at least that's what we've come to convince ourselves of. But these cravings in the mind telling us this are lies, lives of the father of lies, which is Satan. But our old sinful nature drives us there. But at the moment of salvation, God begins what 2 Corinthians 5.17 refers to as a new creation work. Old things are passing away. All things are becoming new. I love what one commentator used. He used a computer analogy. He used the idea that our hearts and minds in an unsaved state are like a computer which is overrun with viruses and program errors. Sin did all of this to us. At salvation, God begins to reprogram our spiritual hard drive. He, by grace, begins to clean up our thoughts, clean up our value system, and he changes our drives away from selfish pride to become a desire to glorify Christ who died on the cross to save us from our sin and give us eternal life, new life. The second half of verse 12 tells us that grace does not only instruct us about what we need to disown, grace also teaches us to put on or to own a Christ-like way of life. It says to live soberly, righteously, and godly as a way of life. Tell me, tell me, my friend, is this happening in your life I know it's been happening in my life. Now, if it's not happening in your life, I've got to ask why. If grace is not actively teaching you this stuff, why? Do you not know Christ as Savior or are you just a churchgoer? You just view yourself as a spiritual being. But is this happening in your life? Are you being instructed by grace? Are you being instructed about uh, the deep things in your soul and denying sin and doing righteousness? Well, if you are, then you have to ask yourself the same question I have to ask me. Am I a good student of grace or am I a rebellious one? You know exactly what I mean. The grace of God as a believer has taught me and sometimes I acquiesce and say, yes, that's what I want to do. But other times I fight the teaching work of the grace of God because sometimes Mark Smith, well, he just wants to give in to his old nature. That's not a good thing, is it, in your life or mine? Aren't you grateful for the teaching ministry of the grace of God? And aren't you and I grateful for the forgiving nature of God? We come to him and confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us. Friend, do you know Christ? If you don't, receive him today. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.